Um, so another model that um, Father James Mellon um, suggests that might be a, a positive model perhaps is the map model of the parish as a photocopier. And he says, um, this is a model of evangelization, disciple and discipling and missioning. So we called, you know, in the Great Commission, Jesus said, go out and make disciples. So a photocopier exists to make copies. And it does this by drawing paper into itself. And that's evangelization, drawing people in. The people need to feed into the parish through the various paper trays, through hearing the charisma. So it might be RCIA, Alpha schools, baptism, play groups, soup vans, invitation. Everything that we do as a parish needs to be a tray feeding people into the photocopier. Um, it needs to be whatever we're doing socially, everything that we think that we're doing, we need to think how is this drawing people into our parish, but not just drawing them in, but um, evangelising them and helping them to meet Jesus. And then after the photocopier draws paper in, then it prints and copies and staples. So that's discipleship, that's baptising and teaching and forming. But remember that the people have already um, heard about Jesus. So once they come in, they're discipled. We offer them the sacraments, we teach them, we um, form them, and they receive the imprint of Jesus on their hearts. And so once they become disciples of Jesus, once um, Jesus is imprinted on their hearts, you know, in the photocopier, in the, in the kind of the machinery of our parish, through the um, involvement and formation um, that they get there. So that you can say in a sense that um, a parish, I think the Australian, Catholic, the United States Catholic Bishops Conference once said in a document called um, Our Hearts Were Burning Within Us, it said that the parish doesn't have an adult faith formation program, the parish is an adult faith formation program. It is this kind of photocopier that baptises and teaches and forms and grows disciples. And then after the print drawing in the paper and printing and stapling and folding, if you've got a really fancy one, do you guys have one of those yeah, that actually yeah. folds the papers? Yeah. yeah. Um, it spits out the paper with the imprinted word so that that imprinted word can go out and change the world. And history has proven that the pen is mightier than the sword. And so this missioning, this paper with Jesus, you know, these people with Jesus imprinted on their hearts goes out and sends, you know, spreads the message out to wherever those people go, these people that have Jesus imprinted on their hearts. You know, they're apostles. Apostoli means to be sent out. And so your parish is, the, is making disciples. On ramps that funnel people into the process, and, and, and I guess you can say that change, when we change, you can still go back because you can unchange. But transformed people can never go back. Once you've got the, the, the printed word on the paper in the photocopier, you can never get that off again. It, it's going to go out and it's going to always have that, that, in, that um, information printed on it. And I guess people who are transformed don't become untransformed. And so what we need to be doing in our parish is it's forming transformed people. And I guess a healthy parish, a healthy church, as its best, at its best is when it has this cycle happening, drawing people in, teaching them the charisma, um, you know, drawing them in and then discipling, um, you know, forming them in the parish and then sending them out. And when the church is healthy, it does this really well. But when the church isn't healthy, it kind of gets turned in on itself and it becomes overheated like a jammed photocopier. And a jammed photocopier is no use. And too many of our parishes are like jammed photocopiers. They're not producing the paper or the fruit, the transformed people that are going out. We can have tons of programs but no process. And, um, and I guess, we, you know, we have to begin to think about how are we making this process happen in our parish. And so I guess, you know, with this little um, thing there, who wants change? You know, lots of people put up their hands to say that they um, would like change. 
But then, who wants to change? <laughs> Not so many hands up. And so I guess um, there's a, a, why would we change? Why would we um, do what it takes to change who we are as parishes and to understand who we are as parishes? Well, my father um, said I could be anything I want to be. And it's up to me to turn my daydreams into realities. And typically, I just go with the flow as I power dreams, but now my passion burns like calories for my purpose in this thing called life. What position do I play? I'm on a mission every day to decipher what kind of life I should lead. Should I lead? Should I follow? Am I filled or am I hollow? I need water because this life has been a tough pill to swallow, although that begs the question, who am I? No, seriously, who am I? I haven't come to a conclusion. I need answers, but all I have is options, and my heart is always shopping for new identities that need adopting, because I've been the outcast. I've been the jock. I've been the straight shooter. I've run from cops. I feel like an actor, but in this scene, it took away the props. I have nothing to hide behind. Here I stand, exposed by tan lines, left with the question, am I? Three simple words to plan my time, and they're vital. My mind's on standby, my soul's still idle. Titles describe content, and I've been a book without a cover. Ask my father and my mother for assistance or some other kind of help. I'm feeling smothered by the media. It hovers what I want in front of another and another and another. I've discovered nothing. Who am I? Everything I plan to be hasn't worked out. Same. Webster can't define me. You're looking at a jack of all trades, wearing a mask of all shapes, ready to act with no shame. It seems my possibilities are endless. I can be someone to follow, or someone hardly worth a mention. Like Twitter, I'm bitter because my friends are trendsetters who dress better than me. I'm not trendy, am I? But I can change, and spend my change in dollar bills on fancy things and swallow pills like my friends do. I don't do drugs, but I love to pretend to. I mean, it's hard to turn down what they lend you, what they send you. Weekends tend to be a curious set of days. Friday and Saturday, I do it all. But by Sunday, I'm ashamed of what I did. I'm on the fence, and here I sit. I go to church sometimes, and each time I ask God to answer the question, who am I? Does he know? Does he care? Are you listening? Are you there? It only makes sense to ask the maker why he made what he made. And since we all look different, our purpose can't be the same. I am someone, an individual, who's mostly confused and sometimes spiritual. Looking to answer this question, praying to make you all respond, hoping society will quiet down so I can listen. We've got a community out there, don't we, that's just desperate for God. And um, we have a church that has this amazing message and this wonderful God that can help young people like that, young people that are in our families, young people that are in our communities, um, discover who they are, you know, that they're loved by God. And that's our mission. That's our mission as church. And um, the probe articulates that mission really well when he says, I dream of a missionary option that is a missionary impulse capable of transforming everything so that the church's customs, ways of doing things, times and schedules, language and structures can be suitably channeled for the evangelisation of today's world rather than for the self-preservation. More mission oriented, to make an ordinary pastoral activity on every level more inclusive and open, to inspire a constant desire to go forth and in this way to elicit a positive response from all those whom Jesus summons to friendship with himself. Amen. Amen.